Hi everyone, welcome to episode three of our Strong Drink, a Hebrew study series. Last time we had um, only went through two verses in an hour there, Maddie B. So uh, today we are going to finish up what would be um, the first uh, four verses of Hebrews here. And so we'll be starting in Hebrews chapter one, um, verse three, I believe. Yes. So, uh, yeah. So I don't know. We, last week we covered verse one and two, and now we're at verse three and four. Whoa, whoa. So let's just read it through and just kind of drink together, enjoy it together. Long ago, at many times, and in many ways, God spoke to our fathers by the prophets, but in these last days, he has spoken to us by his Son, whom he has appointed heir of all things, through whom also he created the world. Shing, ding, ding, ding. Mm -hmm. And today, this, these verses, he is the radiance of the glory of God and the exact imprint of his nature. Shing, ding, ding. And he upholds the universe by the word of his power. After making purifications for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much superior to angels. Whoa, shing, ding, ding as the name he has inherited is much more excellent than, is more excellent than theirs. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> much more is probably true too. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I guess uh, today I'll be doing some verse three, at least a little bit of it. And uh, Paul, whoa, whoa. Yeah, feel free to jump in here, Paul, whenever. Whoa, and you can do, oh, shing, ding, ding. But let's go over this verse. He is the radiance. And so some of this, whoa, is we're just taking this in. Like, like there's an intellectual way to view these things. And I think, you know, you can put your thinking cap on at times. But like, whoa, whoa. Like when you start feeling the lamb and you start feeling the drink, you know, it's okay to just dive in there. Just eat it. Just drink it. When you know it's God, when you know, whoa, whoa, whoa. When you know it's mystically him, just, just eat and drink and enjoy it, you know? Whoa, and you're going to see fruit in your life as a result of it. He is the radiance of the glory of God, ding, 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 and the exact imprint of his nature. And if he upholds the universe by the word of his power. Huh. So, man, this thing is deep right whoa, whoa, yes. whoa. paul yes. you recognize that jesus right there that's whoa shing ding ding that's the jesus whoa shining his light out whoa 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 through us right yes. he's like shining his light he's that's the catholic jesus right here light of light right that's from the nicene creed right he's the light of light whoa 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 and then the second part right so like Jesus in radiating the glory of God, like there, that word over there in the Greek, it has kind of like two different meanings. Like in one meaning, the active meaning, whoa, whoa, whoa. It, it can mean like shining forth. I believe it's phineo. And then the other, uh, mean, uh, word, other way in the passive meaning, it can mean that it's a reflection of God's glory, right? A reflection. So Christ is kind of both things, right? Ding, ding, ding. You can kind of see him both ways. Whoa, whoa. He's, he's emanating the glory of God. He's emanating the exact nature of God. He's emanating who God is. Whoa, whoa. And then he's also uh, reflecting the glory of the Father. Ding, 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 ding. So let's just read through this and drink together. Whoa, Shabbat Shabbat. And speaking of the relationship between Christ and the Father, the fathers often use the image of the radiance of the sun. The inner core of the sun's fiery heart expresses itself in the flashing forth of its rays. Yes. And one can see the sun, whoa, shing, ding, ding, only in this effulgence burning in the sky since its inner core remains inaccessible to human eyes. Whoa, whoa, whoa. In the same way, the sun is the expression of the Father's transcendent glory. Whoa, whoa, whoa. The Father himself remains inaccessible and invisible to the crea his creation, right? Whoa, but Jesus re uh, reveals him, right? And he is only seen as he manifests himself through <laughs> his son. Ching, ding, ding, ding. 
This is what Christ meant when he said to the disciples, he who has seen me has seen the Father. Shing, mm. ding, 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 ding. Whoa, say la, say la, say la. Well, you have anything you want to say about all that? <laughs> yeah, I was reading in um, the ancient Christian uh, commentary on scripture on this, and they, they were talking about the, the radiance and the sun just like that, but they, they went in a little bit more than the, the Farley quote there, a little more mystical. Let's see here. The glory, this is from uh, Theodore, Theodore of yeah. Krill. The, the glory is eternal. Therefore, the brightness is also eternal. Brightness is of the same nature as fire. Therefore, the sun is of the same nature as the father. And since the metaphor of brightness so manifestly demonstrates their co-eternality and consubstantiality, he allows an opportunity for those sick with the blaspheme of Sibelius uh, and Fontanus, according to which the brightness does not subsist by itself. By another metaphor, he excludes this blasphemy, for he goes on to say, and the very stamp of his nature. So what, what we're dealing with here is we're not saying that this, the core of the sun and all of its energies existed in a time or a place in which the radiant rays of glory, which is the visual representation of the nature of God, was not. We're saying that the sun has always radiated this glory, or, you know, the sun being God, right? The inner core, the glory of God's divine nature has always been radiating. And in that radiation of the Father, the sun is revealed as the bright shining lights of this eternal glory, which shines within the one nature of God. So it's important that as he said that he's the radiant sun, he's the radiant glory of God. It's to say the exact same nature is to, to prove this eternality of both the radiant glory and, and the one who it's radiating from, which is the father son relationship. Um, and I, and I think mm. that's, that's really important because in um, one more, one more quote here, Severian of Gabella says, Seeking to present more clearly that the word was begotten of the essence of the Father, he makes mention of radiance. For the radiance is from the essence of that of which it is an afflux of light, and it is continuously conceived, both from it and never apart from that of which it is the radiance of. But since radiance implies a lesser nature than that of which it is the radiance and existence, not in the same nature. He uses a different word and states that Christ is the exact image of his nature. The, here it is. The first phrase, radiance of his glory, demonstrates that Christ cannot be separated from the essence as God. The second phrase, exact image of his nature, proves that he is not without God's nature. For just as John calling Christ the word, adds he who was with god and was god so also the apostle paul in his writing of hebrews we we covered that we you know it can be anyone who wrote it but having said radiance he adds the exact image of his nature shing ding ding so it's we just got we the main problem with this verse and what this verse is, was really for the church fathers it seems saying to them was that not only is he a sec the second person of the Trinity who is the brilliant ray and not the inner glory of the Son, does not mean that he does not share in that eternal glory with the Father and the Son. And therefore, in his, his, his human form on earth, when he was the light in the darkness, in the world, the light has come to the world and shined in it, and the light and the world did not know it or could not comprehend it. That light has always shined with the Father and now shines to us in our world. Shing, ding, ding. <laughs> Baba, Baba. Amen, amen, amen. And so um, just uh, briefly too, whoa, whoa. 
That's awesome too. I love that about the same essence. Whoa, shing, ding, ding, ding. The church father's jumping in there. Son has same essence as the father, guys. Hey, it's the same essence. <laughs> Listen up. Same essence. Yes. Not different, like, whoa, 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 whoa. Like just one God and another God. No, no, no. We're still going all the way back to the oneness. Whoa, of God. Yes. Whoa, whoa, shing, ding, ding, ding. So anyways, like uh, our friend uh, Amy, shout out, Amy McDonald, she had this really cool thing she told us about. She was like, whoa, whoa, when it's speaking about the radiance of the glory of God, we're also talking, whoa, about the beauty of his person, shing, ding, ding. You know, Jesus is beautiful. <laughs> yes. I love that song. <laughs> oh my gosh. Whoa, shaga daga daga daga. Like Jesus, you're beautiful to yes. me. Wonderful, wonderful counselor, counselor. <laughs> Jesus, you're beautiful to me. But yeah, the he's beautiful. He's beautiful, like his attributes, who God is. I don't, you know, I'm not an expert in this subject. Maybe Paul, you are, but you know, I mean, I when I look at Jesus, I just see the beauty of who God is. Mm -hmm. And there's like this aesthetic when you look into his face about his characteristics. Like, you know, like he's like he came as a lowly servant to serve all of humanity. And in seeing that, you see this beauty of God, mm -hmm. you know, and you see like yeah. how he's str strong, strong to save. But yet he's he's mild mannered and tempered. He's, he's, you know, he's, he's not quick to anger, you know, and so you see these, these, these uh, temperaments within God, whoa, whoa, and you see this, this beauty of who God is, and, and the way that he is, whoa, 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 like Jesus is like this beautiful person, even, whoa, his canonic, uh, whoa, outpouring on the cross is, is just delectable, shing, ding, ding, yes. ding. Yeah, so the you see on the right, you see the stamp, right, and you see uh, the you see the wax imprint. Well, it'd be like whoa, whoa! It'd almost be like God the Father being the stamp, and the wax imprint being like Christ. He's like whoa, shing, ding, ding, ding. He's he's the exact image. Whoa, <laughs> whoa, of the Father. Whoa, whoa, whoa! But that stamp would be like invisible right? Because the Father is like invisible, except revealed by the Son. Ding, 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 ding. So I'll just read through this quote. I love this quote. Jesus is the, and this is from the, uh, uh, the Epistle of the Hebrews, uh, little, little uh, shing dingy by uh, Farley. Jesus is the, represent, uh, is the representation of the Father's being. Whoa. The <laughs> word transplanted representation is the greek character the word used for the stamp of seals we see that on the right side cognate to the verb cariso to engrave Shing, ding 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 just as a stamp or seal produces the exact representation of the image on the wax so the sun is the exact representation and image of the father's being his nature epostasis right wow. <laughs> Shing, ding ding yeah, hypostasis or uh, upostasis, if you like the Erasmian dialect, shang dong dong. All that the God, uh, the, all that God the Father is, the Son is also. The Son bears within him the full deity of the Father and all his power and authority. Mm. <laughs> oh, you have any, any thoughts on this one or? We just move it along. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we can we can move it along just to just to make sure we get to um, what we're excited about here at the end is going to be our co contemplative walk through verses one through four. Oh, yeah. um, you know, yeah. I, I one thing is is that we have to remember what we said in the in the beginning of this um, last week, how we can't take these anthropomorphisms anthropomorphism or or mythologies and and apply them in a direct way like jesus is is is, is much you know the father is the stamp 
uh, you know, the, the press, the ring, the, the, the ring that's pressed into the wax, which then represents the power and authority of God. Well, that's not to say that, that God, that Jesus required this, this seal on his, his flesh, but that he bore that seal as he entered into the flesh. Like the, the, the seal of the Holy Spirit was upon his humanity from, from the beginning he became incarnate in the Virgin Mary. So this isn't like at, at, this isn't like God stuck his hand down when he was 30 when, when John was baptizing him and finally sealed him off and said, now this is my son. This is the exact image. 30-year-old Jesus, he, he finally ascended to sonship in, in whatever way we, we think humanly possible. No, that's not the case. The case is, is that if you've seen me, you've seen the father. We're not looking for the guy with the ring on. You know, we're looking, when we look at Jesus, we are seeing God. <laughs> you know, we are seeing the fullness of God. Whatever the father has in God, in God's, in Godhood, in, in, in God aspect, in character and in nature, Jesus also in fullness has everything. Thing that the father has he's been given all things so um yeah just just i think that um it's a great analogy for sure because it represents the king's word upon th the letter or the seal which is spoken to another um like somebody to give a treaty or two kingdoms working together right um so in that aspect it's good but we can't we can't Think of it as Jesus receiving this stamp of approval at some later date. He, he has always been the express image of God, the word to become flesh and, and incarnate. <laughs> yeah, man. Oh, she ding ding. So this one is pretty sweet. Right. And we got Jesus holding the world up <laughs> on the right side. Java, Java, ding dong. <laughs> He's upholding the universe. Look at that guy. <laughs> oh, shing, ding, 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 ding. I'm just going to read through this stuff because it's got a lot of whack on it. Shang, dong, dong, dong. So get in your contemplative stance. <laughs> and just enjoy. Enjoy. <laughs> Also, the sun carries and upholds all things in the universe by the simple word of his power. <laughs> wow, 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 simple word. <laughs> simple word. <laughs> he sustains the whole cosmos by the word of his command. Whoa, since he is one with the Father. Whoa, and is one through whom the Father made all things. All things continue in existence only because he orders it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. The universe is not self-sustaining. It is sustained only by God's power. Wow. Whoa, shung, dung, 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 dung. Oh. Big bang, eat your heart out. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa, ding, 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 ding. He's upholding every atom, everything. Mm. Now, this is so much fun. Whoa, whoa. Yeah, you know, like sometimes we look to like these scientific things and I love all the science behind things. I think science is really cool, you know? <laughs> but the, the fact of the matter is, is that Christ is upholding every single molecule in this universe. <laughs> there is nothing that's not being upheld by this same Jesus Christ. Mm. He is God, you know? Whoa, whoa. Yeah. When Jesus said uh, to the Pharisees, he said, whoa, shing, ding, ding, ding. They said, uh, uh, they asked him why you work on the Sabbath, right? They were like, why do you work on the Sabbath? Shing, ding, ding, ding. And he was like, well, you know, the, uh, the father works and same with me. Shing, ding, ding. What he was saying was, he was saying in another way, I am upholding the universe. <laughs> well, the, the Jews, they understood that. They understood that this same Jesus was upholding the universe. What a yummy treat. So let's just move on now. We can just, we can just uh, read on over here, this nice little G.K. Chesterton thing. And it was so much fun. 
As G.K. Chesterton once wrote, the sun only rises each morning because each morning God bids it to rise. <laughs> Our author, isn't that sick? <laughs> oh my gosh. Our author asserts that it is the eternal sun who bids it to rise. Oh, yeah. it, is the sun, it is the eternal sun in whom all things hold together. And I just want to read this G.K. Chesterton quote because, like, look at that little, those little glasses. Oh, my <laughs> God. Guy, whoa, he's just looking hammered drunk right there. <laughs> ding, ding, yes, ding, ding. Yes. Oh, my God. Shava, dava, dava. This is from his uh, famous book, Orthodoxy. Whoa, whoa, which I haven't read the full book, but this is an amazing quote. Ding, 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 ding. Now, to put the matter in a popular phrase, it might be true that this, and this is just speaking of, whoa, 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 how the sun is. The sun is, like, so joyful and, like, so playful and so much fun, you know? Oh, shing, ding, ding, ding. And you see this in him upholding all things. You wouldn't think, whoa, whoa, that him upholding all things is attached to fun and joy, but it definitely <laughs> God, whoa, shing, ding, ding, ding. So now to put the matter in a popular phrase, it might be true that the sun rises regularly because he never gets tired of rising. So that was a popular phrase back then, probably not now as much. His routine might be due not to a lifelessness, but to a rush of life. Yes. The thing I mean, I mean can be seen, for instance, in children when they, they find some game or joke they especially enjoy. A child kicks his legs rhythmically through excess, not absence of life. Whoa, whoa. Yes. Because children have abounding vitality because they are uh, in spirit fierce and free. Therefore, they want things repeated and unchanged. They always say, do it again. And the grown-up person does it again until he is nearly dead. <laughs> <laughs> So much fun. I'm saying this. For grown up people are not strong enough to exult in monotony. But perhaps God is strong enough to exult in monotony. It is yes. possible that God says every morning, do it again to the sun. Yes. <laughs> and every evening, do it again to the moon. Shing, ding, ding. It may not be, uh, be automatic necessity that makes all daisies alike. It may be that God makes every daisy separately, but has never gotten tired of making them. <laughs> oh, Shabba Daba Daba. Oh, what a Lord. crazy quote. What a crazy quote. What a good God we serve, man, full of joy. Yeah, Paul, you want to hammer it? <laughs> Shing, ding, ding. Yeah, Shabba Daba. Wow. Hmm. And after making purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. After making purification for sin. Uh, in the Old Testament purification process, there was a red heifer who would be sacrificed on the altar. And the ashes would be brought outside the camp. <laughs> ding, ding, ding. And it would be mixed with, with water. Water for purification purposes. And everyone who has touched a dead body <laughs> would purify themselves with this water. The wages of sin are death. <laughs> You're stumbling into a pit of black and darkness into death because of sin, there's only one thing that can save you. And that's the purifying water uh, that came out of the side of Jesus Christ outside the camp. <sighs> so we're seeing, we're seeing here fulfillment of Old Testament purification rituals and laws being applied to the greater sprinkling of Christ for the church and for the whole world. You know, it says that Holy Spirit has been emptied out onto all flesh. This is the purification of humanity. This is the turning back again of humanity to the Lord. And who 
ooh, shing ding. This is this is taking our minds and, and giving ourselves a big swirly and, and washing away any wrong think not only about ourselves, but about God and about others. And this purification happened once and for all flesh, all of creation, all of humanity. The whole cosmos has been purified by the other-centered light, love, and life of Jesus Christ within space and time, within his creation. The incarnate Son is and has and will always present us holy and blameless to the Father. Shang, dang, dang, dang. Yes. <laughs> Quick little uh, sidetrack note there on purification. Back to the old slides. Unless you want to add, Maddie B, I'd love to hear your thoughts if you have any thoughts on purification. No, sir. We're going to have like a full chapter on that later. So <laughs> Perfect, perfect. Yeah. <laughs> the sun seated at the right hand of the majesty on... Hi. Oh, hi. This is uh, from Farley again. We find Jesus now rules as king, sharing the throne and authority of his father. The Jews of the first century expected Messiah to rule on a throne. But these expectations centered around an earthly throne, ruling an earthly kingdom. Christians assert that Christ possessed an authority far more exalted and that he sat down in heaven at the right hand of God. <laughs> Christ, though true man and son of David, rules over the entire universe. Christians confess the truth, shocking to con uh, conventional Jewish piety, that a man sits enthroned with God, sharing his rule of the world. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. This whole verse of after making purification for our sins has been seated now at the right hand of the Father, speaking to the human nature within the incarnate Christ. Ooh, it's saying that you, you are Jesus is humanity. He doesn't have a different humanity than you and I have. He, he, is not, he is not something other than us because the unassumed is the unsaved. So when we're speaking of Jesus' humanity as, as being cleansed and washed, it means that he dove into the, the burial grounds. He touched a dead body. He touched Adam in the pits of our hell and delusions. And so when he came up, he purified the dead. In, in resurrecting in the life-giving Holy Spirit in the flesh of Christ and in our flesh, we have the purified cleansing of our dead man, our dead old man. And in that same flesh that we have, he had, and the same flesh that was crucified, rose from the grave, and now is ascended at the right hand of the Father. It is to say that this is something completely new for God, in that God was not before creation man, but man is a creature in which it has always been God's plan to, in creating him, empty himself in, and then through his other-centered love, through his, his mercy and grace and kindness and, and the way that he puts all others first in his loving goodness and servant heart, has now chosen humanity and lifted all of humanity in his humanity to the place of power and authority in which when we say get up in the name of Jesus and walk people get up when we say you are healed right now in the name of Jesus they are healed because what we are walking in is in the same authority and stamp and seal upon his humanity that is stamped and sealed upon ours. And that seal and that promise is the Holy Spirit in which gives us unction to look to God, to look to our brother, and to love one another in that. And that, to me, is what this is talking about in the glorification of our humanity and the elevation of it within the incarnate Christ. <laughs> Ding, ding. 
Yes, and we continue now into verse four. Having become as much superior to angels as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. We're going to, um, next week, probably get into more angel talk. We're not going to do any angelology, but we are um, going to wrestle with this idea of um, Jesus' superiority to angels. Well, what, what does that mean? What superiority does angels have? Um, what are the purpose of angels? How do they work and manifest in, and move in our life in relation to the life of the person and work of Christ? But we're going to not get into that this very moment. Uh, we're going to be more concerned with the name that he inherited and what that means. The Son's Excellent Name. Names carry more value and importance in biblical than in modern usage. Not only may a name identify, but it frequently expresses the essential nature of its bearer. To know the name is to know the person. Religio-historical background. The name is thus a power which is very closely associated with the bearer and which discloses his nature. Pronouncement or invocation of the name sets in operation the energy potentially contained in him. Yeah, 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 yeah. In the name, in the name. It's not, I'm not, I'm not saying in the name, like I'm, I'm have, I have holy water and a cross in my hand and in the name, in the name. No, I'm standing in the humanity of Christ at the authoritative right hand of God through the empowering of the Holy Spirit. And I am with my word as he has spoken, whew, igniting the world around me. We are seeing heaven on earth realities happen in this moment. Ooh, by the grace of God, we express this truth. Shang, dang, 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 dang. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. We are, we are in the name. We are literally in the name. At the name, the nature of God. We are in union with the nature of God in Christ Jesus by the Holy Spirit. This, this is not, this is not folklore and, and as I mentioned, tokens and totems that are used in absence of a real power within us. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. I just want to throw in just one minor caveat, one minor thing, right? So in the name, the son's excellent name. Whoa, whoa, whoa. In the Old Testament. They had this theology where they believed that the name somehow it represented, whoa, 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 or described, whoa, whoa, who God was. So you have things like Jehovah Rapha, God or healer, right? Elyon, you know, he's the God most high. Adonai, he's, uh, you know, Lord, you know, those kind of things. Shing, ding, ding, ding. But at the name of Jesus, whoa, whoa, every tongue will, uh, uh, or every knee will bow and every tongue will give thanksgiving. That's one translation or another translation is every tongue will gladly confess or every tongue will confess. You can kind of take that word different ways. It can mean praise or it can mean confession. Yes. Uh, that Jesus is Lord. Whoa, shing, ding, ding, ding. And I wonder why that is. <laughs> Could it be, whoa, shing, ding, 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 that Jesus, whoa, he's revealed the nature of his name, shang, dung, yes. dung, dung, name, the name of Jesus, Iasus, right, uh, Joshua in the Old Testament, right, the Savior, right, he saved us so much into the utter ends of the earth, whoa, in every direction that we're so willing to be give thanksgiving and praise to this God, whoa, whoa, who has saved us to the uttermost ends of the earth, ding, 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 ding. <laughs> He's revealed his nature, his nature, his onama, his nature as Jesus, the Savior. Whoa, whoa, the nature of God is to be like Jesus. 
yeah, yeah. <laughs> and the mm. nature of God is to humbly save. Ding, 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 ding. Shabbat yes. Shabbat. Yes. There, there is no other God behind the back of Jesus. You know, Oof. and I think that is so important to this revelation. When you see him, you see the Father. There is not an angry Zeus ready to smite us bad little children, but Jesus is holding back his anger saying, strike me, daddy, instead. No, 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 no. Shing, ding, 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 ding. He, the, the son has agreed with the father for humanity that we are worth saving because he loves us. <laughs> they agree. Oh, oh, here we go. <laughs> the son's inheritance. Uh, Farley quote again. In speaking of inheriting a name, the author means that Jesus inherits the Father's glory, rank, and authority. A son will inherit all the wealth and status of the Father. And in the same way, Jesus the Son inherits all the power and glory of God the Father when he ascends to his right hand as the triumphant Messiah. Yeah, yeah, and if you remember last week, we talked about this. A son will inherit all the wealth and status from his father. Again, we are not talking about Jesus, the second person of the Trinity, the Logos, the eternal son, because he, he has an eternal inheritance as the, the only begotten son of God. So this, again, is speaking to and continues to speak to in this light, his humanity, this new this, this Logos become flesh, this incarnate Yahshua HaMashiach that has been revealed and been elevated. It, it's, it's so beautiful because in the incarnation, Jesus is, is not only revealing to us our Father, our Heavenly Father, but he is also revealing to us who we are <laughs> and what the Father thinks about us. You know, when the Father says, I will never leave you or forsake you, well, Jesus was never lost or forsaken. He, he rose out of the grave <laughs> in his humanity. <laughs> Three days. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, 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 hey. Whoa, 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 whoa. This, isn't, this has far-reaching implications because this is, not a, this is not something to take away from your value and, and the glory that God has given you and the grace and mercy that is shown and, and, and the power which you walk in in signs and wonders as the apostles did. But this is to show you that, man, it is because of Christ and what he's done to humanity that we now walk in these things. And, and it's speaking to the humanity of all the atonement was once and for all. The forgiveness of sins was once and for all. So all of humanity, by the power of the Holy Spirit in them, through the revelation and their yes, their, through the power of the Spirit's ability to turn our hearts, who were once stumbling directly downward, into an upward movement towards God, that means in our mind, we elevate our mind, we, fo we look to, uh, focus on things above where Christ is and where we are hidden in God. Whoa, shing, ding, ding, ding. So it's, a, it's about his condescension as God in his love and his elevation in his humanity and in his grace. <laughs> shing, ding, ding. A lot of whack on that. A lot of whack on that. Shing, ding, ding, ding. I'm trancing out over here. Seriously. I love that little baby Jesus sitting on a father's lap. <laughs> ding, ding, ding. Oh, it, it, just one quick comment about this picture, guys. So, whoa, whoa. Like in the Orthodox thought, like you never, you never um, take a, you never draw the father because the father's invisible, right? And so you only draw pictures of the Son, Jesus Christ. But we, you know, the, the reason for this picture is whoa, whoa, is just to kind of display the Son's inheritance. Ding, 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 ding. But uh, we, we got to be a slightly careful. 
<laughs> about how we view these images because we can start thinking that God the Father's an old dude with a beard. <laughs> 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 ding ding ding! <laughs> Shut the, dub, the, dub. the whole concept is Jesus is the expressed image of His person. He's the expressed image of the Father. The Father, whoa, whoa, is not expressing the image. Jesus is expressing the image, right? Yes. Oh, shing ding ding ding! Yeah, you know, He is the expressed image. He's the visible image of what God really looks like. Most of God is invisible. Whoa, whoa, the Father and the Holy Spirit. Ding, 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 ding. You can see the Spirit through the movement of the trees, like the wind blowing something. You can see the Spirit through that way and the things that are moved, but you don't see the Spirit. The Spirit, whoa, whoa, is, is, is invisible. Same with the Father. Whoa, whoa, whoa. But Jesus came. To reveal the Father, whoa, 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 yeah, whoa, yeah. whoa, and, yeah. and 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 it seems it appears the the Spirit as well. Ding, 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 ding. Yes, God. <laughs> it's yeah. It's it's important to to make the distinction too that we are not saying that the Father became incarnate. <laughs> we are saying that the Father is God, Jesus is God. Therefore, God in fullness was in the incarnate son in the flesh therefore if you've seen me you've seen the father jesus says you know what i mean it's the fullness of the godhead it's not it's not that we're saying that the invisible father became visible in the son in a way in which the father and the son has no distinct personhood between themselves oh my lord yeah 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 the trinity is a love dance of relationship there has to be persons within a relationship. Otherwise, Jesus is just loving himself. <laughs> <laughs> ding, ding, ding. Oh, and I guess this is our conclusion. We've got a very light conclusion over here. <laughs> <laughs> very light. But... Uh, yeah, it's 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 basically this is a summary of those those first four verses. You know, God He has appointed Christ heir of all things. Yes. It was through the Son that God made the universe. Huh. The Son is the fulgence, whoa, or reflection of God's glory. He is the very image or of the essence of God, the impress of His being. Yes, He upholds all things by His enabling Word. He has made purifications for sins. Oh, whoa. He sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. Shing, ding, ding, ding. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. This is a dead set of material, dudes. You, congratulations if you got this far. You guys yes. have, like, real winners. Shing, ding, ding, ding. <laughs> you really got through, like, probably some of the most compact whoa, pieces yes. of theology in the of Hebrews, whoa, ding, 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 ding. It's very compact, right? So that's why we spend a lot of time on this. So, Shabba Baba, you got any thoughts? Or should, we, should we do the contemplative reading? Shabba Baba. Yeah, this is great. I mean, now that you, now that we've went through this and kind of laid this conclusion out here and kind of gave you all thoughts to consider, drink on, and and um, chew on for these first four verses, I really challenge you guys to to hop in yourself now. And let Holy Spirit just run wild with you guys. Like, open up the text and just meditate in your, with your favorite commentary or your favorite um, scripture uh, translation or whatever you do. And just open up the book now and, and just allow this permeation of the person and work of Christ and, and who he is in his dual-natured personhood and what that implies and and. and and means for you and for god because th this is uh this is it like this is this is the foundation this is christian foundation 101 you know <laughs> ding 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 yeah. and what a fun foundation it is yes. <laughs> you know so i don't know if you guys got some time right now i don't know if you're in a pleasant place but uh, if you feel up to it, 
you know, close your eyes, you know, or find a relaxing setting, you know, and, you know, and, uh, you know, just drink deep. We're going to read like three or four verses, uh, you know, the first four verses, but in different formats and various translations. We'll be pulling from uh, the amp, uh, Amplified Classic, well, the TPT, some Mirror, some Voice, you know, some fun translations, you know, that, whoa, whoa, you, you know, and I would just encourage you to just drink it in and just enjoy shing ding ding yes. maybe we can uh, switch off maybe paul read one verse and you can read the next and we'll just keep on rotating if you don't mind you think that's a good idea that sounds great okay shaga daga so take your socks off <laughs> <laughs> put your feet up. pull off your wig <laughs> You know, yeah, yeah, get your recliner, ding, 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 and let's just enjoy. Let's just enjoy. Oh, Lord, we just thank you for this text, Shabbatava. You revealed so much to us about who the Son is, who the Father is, like the deep inner workings of the Trinity. Whoa, 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 you're so beautiful, God. You've like revealed so much beauty to us, shing, ding, 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 in this thing. And we just adore you, God. We just adore you. We just adore you. Wow. Shabba dabba dabba dabba. God, who gave our forefathers many different glimpses of the truth in the words of the prophets, God, having spoken to the fathers long ago, whoa, in the voices and writings of the prophets, in many separate revelations, whoa, each of which set forth a portion of the truth, and in many ways, shing, ding, 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 through ancient times, God spoke in many fragments and glimpses of prophetic thought to our fathers. Yes. But to us, living in these last days, God now speaks to us openly in the language of a son. <laughs> Recently, he spoke to us directly through his son. At the end of the present age, given us the truth in the son. But in the last of these days, he has spoken to us in the person of a son. Through the Son, God made the whole universe. And to the Son, He has ordained that all creation shall ultimately belong. Whom He appointed heir and lawful owner of all things. Also by and through whom He created the world. And reaches of space and the ages of time. Whoa! He made, produced, built, operated, and arranged them in order. Whoa. The pointed heir of everything. Whoa. For through him, God created the panorama <laughs> of all things. Whoa. At all time. Yes. This sun, radiance of the glory of God, flawless expression of the nature of God. This is the one who, imprinted with God's image, shimmering with his glory. The sun is the dazzling radiance of God's splendor, the exact impression of God's true nature, his mere image. He is the soul expression of the glory of God, the light being, the outraying or radiance of the divine, and he is the perfect imprint and very image of God's nature. 
Oh my god, that is such good news. Oh, that one gets you every time. <laughs> Shing ding. Whoa, shing ding. Upholding and maintaining and guiding and propelling the universe by his mighty word of power. Uphold the upholding principle of all that is. Wow. Sustains all that exists through the power of his word. He holds everything together by what he says. Powerful words. <laughs> Affected in person the reconciliation between God and man and then took his seat at the right hand of the majesty on high. He accomplished for us the complete cleansing of sins and then took his seat on the highest throne at the right hand of the majestic one. After he finished the sacrifice for sins, the son took his honored place high in the heavens right alongside god <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome <laughs> ding 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 oh my gosh taking a place and rank by which he himself became as much superior to angels as the glorious name or title which he has inherited is different from and more excellent than theirs thus proving himself by the more glorious name that he has won far greater than all angels of god yes the son of god is elevated as far above the heavenly messengers as his holy name is elevated above theirs he is infinitely greater than angels, for he inherited a rank and a name far greater than theirs. Mm -hmm. This is a fun one. No prophetic or shepherd messenger can compete with him in rank or name. <laughs> this is <laughs> right. <laughs> this is his rightful portion. Whoa. Whatever the medium was through which God spoke of old, whether angelic or prophetic, recorded scripture is not superior to revealed sonship. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. Whoa. Shing ding ding ding. Shing ding 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 ding. Shabba dabba dabba. So I guess thank you for joining us through these first four verses. It's been something of a journey. Whoa. It's a lot of. <laughs> goodness in those verses and uh oh, shabadaba uh paul you want to pray over our day maybe we just yes yes thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you for being all that we are in our humanity for us and as us thank you holy spirit for illuminating and enlightening our minds, our ears, and our mouths to the glory and wonder and majesty of the triune God that you are. Father, we thank you that you purpose to create us, to be your lovers, to be your beloved. We pray, Father, that everyone listening right now this day would find themselves on the bed of the bridegroom, adorned in white, lavished in beauty, put upon us by the grace of God. As your son embraces us fully and ignites the fire within us of the Holy Spirit, which is life and love and joy and laughter. And we, we just give you praise, Lord. We give you praise, Father. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Uh, it's been fun, and we'll continue on next week with something that's going to be totally different than this. We'll probably not go as slow. We'll probably cover large portions of Scripture very fast. You know, so it's, it's going to be different, but uh, kind of wanted to walk through it a little slow at the beginning because there's so much material to cover in these, these short little four verses. So God bless you guys. Love you all. God bless.